in this Into the Outdoors at Home edition. Hey, Noah. Hey, Phoebe, how's it going? Good. Well, are you excited to go fishing today? Yeah. Well, I'm excited to get on the water here, but before we go, we gotta make sure we have the boat all ready to go and all of our safety equipment's ready to go. So will you help me check all that stuff out? Of course. All right, let's get to it. So the first thing we need to check before we put the boat in the water is to make sure the plug is in the boat. Otherwise, uh. the boat might sink, right? Sink? Did he say sink? I'm gonna check that boat plug again. I always do one quick walk around the boat just to look to make sure everything looks okay. That's all unhooked, that feels good. Trolling motor feels nice and solid. Make sure our trolling motor turns on. Trolling motor's on. With the outside of the boat looking good, we checked out the inside. We're gonna have this nice and open and clean. A clean boat is a safe boat. And a boat with the right capacity for what you are doing, this boat can safely carry six people. So no one and I have plenty of space. Every powerboat under 20 feet has a capacity plate. So always check to make sure you are within the boat's capacity before getting out on the water. So have you ever seen one of these before? Yes, I have. All right. Well, then you know that this is a throwable PFD. Now I want you to take a look at this label and make sure it says US Coast Guard approved. You see yeah. it on there? Yep. Good, so anytime you get a piece of equipment you're gonna take out in your boat, always make sure it's US Coast Guard approved. That means it meets all of the standards and that thing will save your life when you need it. Now an important thing with this is to make sure it's always somewhere in the boat that it's easy to get to. You can't have it in a compartment hidden away somewhere because no. sometimes you don't have enough time to react. Now let's talk about PFDs, our personal flotation devices. You're gonna be wearing okay. this guy here, this red vest, now this is the right size for you, but to double check, you wanna check this label on the inside. Then it better say US Coast Guard <laughs> approved, right? Yep. It even has the approval number and all of the information based on the size of the person it's designed for. And the one that I'm wearing is this guy. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. No, this is an automatic PFD that is designed to automatically inflate with submerged in the water. It also includes a manual inflation cord. If someone is ejected from a fast moving boat or bumps their head and falls overboard, they might not be able to locate and pull the cord. That's why the water activated inflation feature can help save lives. These are a really nice option, but you've got to make sure you check yep. all of the regulations. Some states have different requirements for how old you have to be, how big you need to be to use this style versus the kind you're going to be wearing today. So yeah. this will be mine. You're going to get the red one and that's what we're gonna have on board for PFDs. PFDs make sure you'll stay afloat in case you get thrown into the water. And it's also important to be able to signal for help if you get into trouble. This means having signaling equipment on board, like flares, beacons, and communication devices like cell phones and radios. Always check what you need for the boat based on the size of the body of water you plan to enjoy. Now the next, and I think is one of the most important pieces of equipment to have in any boat, especially any boat that has an engine that runs on gasoline, is this bad boy. Fires on the water are unbelievably dangerous, so I always make sure to get a marine grade fire extinguisher. And one of the most important things to check is this dial right up here. Now, oh, cool. make sure that needle right there is pointing in the green, right? Green means good, red is bad. So we know that our fire extinguisher is safe, we have our PFDs on board, Continuing on with the safety part of things, I always have a first aid kit on board because let's face it, we're going fishing, right? There's hooks, there's pokey fish. Sometimes you get scratched up a little bit. So I always make sure we have stuff on board to take care of it right away so nobody gets an infection and you can keep fishing and enjoy the rest of your day. Now, one of the last things I have on board here, this might just look like a regular tackle box, but it's actually a toolbox. I have all kinds of extra stuff on here because let's face it, sometimes things break when you're using them. So yes. always make sure you at least have a handful of tools that'll allow you to do lots of different jobs on your boat. So with that, we got our plug in, we inspected the boat. I know the boat has fuel, all the batteries are charged. We have all of our safety equipment ready to go. Before I forget, I wanna make sure I share our float plan with you. 
I have some people who know that we are launching at this boat launch today. We're gonna to be fishing on this lake right now at this time. And they know that we're gonna come back to this boat launch and they know about what time we're gonna be planning on oh, coming back. That's cool. You always wanna have a float plan. It doesn't matter if you're in a big boat like this or if you're just going out in a kayak or a canoe. It's always important to make sure somebody knows where you're going, right? Yeah. Creating a float plan ahead of time and giving it to a trusted person helps guarantee that help can be called if you experience any trouble out on the water.